The time has come for a Kirby demo. It's popular YouTube. Another day, another demo. Look at this. 800 by 600. I'm horrified. I didn't think there was actually somebody who played on 800 by 600 black bars. This man probably has RTX on his 2080, 3080, whatever the hell he uses. i7, Coffee Lake, Sky Galaxy Brain Processor, and plays on 800 by 600 black bars. I am shocked. <laughs> I'm so mad. And I actually realized because we didn't look at Floppy's resolution yesterday, and I didn't change the resolution. I'm sorry about that. And now I go and check for Kirby because we're doing Kirby, and he's on 800 by 600 black bars, dude. And yes, we are watching it at 800 by 600 black bars. Reg regrettably, I will be watching it on this resolution. Kirby, let's take a look at this guy. Okay, we're, we're looking at this match versus Heroic. So here's the story. He tweets out, um, what does he tweet out? He tweets out that he's going to Jire B. He tweets out, we're going to beat the best team in the world. That's what he said. And then they did. <laughs> Phase of all teams won a match. All right, that's the story of the day. We're looking at what Sponge was referring to and what I co-signed is the worst roster move of 2020. I believe it, man. I I feel like you put Kirby, who is a young star player on Astralis, who's MVP of his first major, on a team full of star players that need space, and and you add another player who is potentially going to need space and not going to be able to just fit in, like to slot in. Kerrigan talked about on the HLTV confirmed episode the other day that like you like what they need is somebody who they need like a sticko or they need an old sticko like a mouse sticko or a taco or somebody who can just kind of just give space who can just be there you know have consistently not under un, like worse performances but is okay with it can just do his job and give the other people space and getting kirby was kind of a weird move in that respect but it seems like things are starting to look a bit better 2-0 here versus nip 2-1 versus Complexity, and now an absolute raffle stomping of Heroic. We haven't seen a 2-0 that was this steep. We just don't see games that are this steep anymore. Just not that often. A series that went so far in this direction, and Kirby was a huge part of it. So now we're going to take a look at Kirby, and we're going to finally talk about that the Kirby spray. That's what we've always wanted to talk about before we go in the match. I just want to shout out Young Bloods, baby. We got fire, baby. It's a top YouTube channel. Me and my girlfriend watch uh, the Young Blood. She got this for me actually for uh, my birthday back in July. Big fan. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and 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 look now at the absolute the absolute bane of my existence. The wor the, the thing that's going to make my YouTube videos the ugliest, the the worst resolution possible in this game besides anything custom. Eight hundred by six hundred with the man of the hour Kirby, and we're going to see how. This resolution and this crazy spray that he has is the reason that he's able to take down Heroic right after calling it publicly um, on on train. Now, Kirby, for me, has always been an Ivy player. I actually didn't know. I haven't watched a lot of Phase recently, so I wasn't sure if Kirby switched spots or if he was going to continue to play Ivy, but I literally can only remember when he played on Astralis, him playing Ivy. Like that's the only position that just like, I, I can't forget about for some reason. So it looks like we will have some more Kirby on Ivy. Then I also don't really watch North, I'll be honest. Like I've not, I never get to cast North. They're almost like non-existent to me. I don't think, I only time I would see them is like a dream hack open maybe. I think I have seen a couple times there, but just not that much time watching. But we all know how good Kirby is in a vacuum. Would that be the correct way to describe it? Like how good he can be, how good he is on paper, that kind of thing. Realizing it has just been a big issue. And I think that it does make sense that I don't, I think it was my maybe a uh, professor that brought up that the roster move could have made sense because it didn't cost that much. So they got like a, a player who they know was really good at one point and it wasn't that expensive. So there wasn't actually that much uh, risk involved. 
which could make a lot of sense. But I'm not sure the exact reason of the pickup. Maybe we'll find out right here, right now. Now, um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, I think he was the, young, <laughs> the youngest player to win a major. I think that was what, that was kind of like his, his crowning achievement uh, when he was 18. And then he, this article was written where he said, winning that major at that age was the worst thing to happen to me. Some, it wasn't, I don't think it was word of the best. I don't want to criticize him too much. Because I'm sure he doesn't believe, like, I'm sure he wouldn't regret winning that major or wish he could take it back. I think what he was implying was that it was something that mentally maybe made him overconfident, maybe made him overestimate his, his situation. Like, you know, he could have stayed on Astralis, but then there was that weird transfer to another roster. There are certain elements, I think, of, of him just doing so well at such, such a young age that messed up his trajectory, I think he feels like. I want to talk about trajectory. Look at Stalin on the AK. That's a laser pointer. Oh. A little fake jump ski. Back on pistols. This is a strong half, of course. I think past this point for, for phase. That certainly feels like it's going to be a rough game based on how sick heroic look right now. The heroic are a team I actually haven't watched a lot recently as well. And I should do some probably some demos on Heroic. I've been hearing a lot on podcasts about Heroic, and that's been giving me some context. I've always known Nico was like a budding star waiting for the right roster, personally. Um, Borup and, and, and Tessis are players that just like, they look like they have robot aim, you know. But I, I didn't know, I don't know kind of like how good players are, like, how, like I feel like aimers are a dime a dozen, straight up and down. Like I, I, I firmly believe that you can find good aimers all over the place and when you pick up players for your team you just have to be the full package you cannot just be a brainless aimer there are so many of those um so i need to learn more about borup and tessas and what makes their individual style a bit different but that's uh, a another demo for another day Today we're here to learn a little bit about how kirby plays ivy a position we haven't looked at too much we did look at alexi b's 180 ct side that had some IV involved. So here he's looking to take the fight and will probably fall back through the smoke as the fight comes up Ivy. If not, he has a point of sanctuary and we, we talk about this long line of sight. I don't know what the hell just happened, but he got the guy in the back too. That must have been a mistake. Now, everyone's like, oh, what about Kirby's shaky aim? Okay, here's my theory, right? My theory is that there's not that much to it. And that it, Kirby's shaky aim. My theory about Kirby's shaky aim is that it's not there's not that much to it, but when he sprays, I think in his mind, the way he looks at it is if you spray on a wall from a medium distance, you're going to get like, you know, bullet holes are going to be all over the place, right? In like a tight spray pattern. That's if you just pull down smoothly. But if you're Kirby and you shake your aim, your mouse, there's a chance that the bullets can all go in the same place. Do you know what I mean? That's what I think he's doing. That's my that's been my theory since I the first time I saw it. Some people are like, oh he cheats. It's like of course he doesn't cheat, but like, why does he do that? That's my theory. I think he's trying to get all the bullets to go in the same place. So I know <laughs> I kind of talked about that. I had this theory and I never explained it. That's my theory. I, I, I don't know if it's true. But uh, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I think it's a pretty good theory. And I also think maybe he's onto something, right? I mean, if you pull smoothly down, there's no chance your bullets always go in the same place. But if you hit it with the Parkinson's, there's a chance. And uh, it was specifically brought up that it was all about the AUG today. Lots of AUG play. So AUGs, I think, are going to devour the meta on train. Because, first of all, they're just extremely strong. 
They double up as ops for a lot cheaper. And ops are extremely welcome on train. The, I think the most meta map to op on, you know, I think mouse sports talked about how the, one of the maps that's fallen off the most is train because of Woxic. They just can't fill that void. I mean, Chris J needs to fill that void, but they, they, they don't have Woxic to work T con on T side. I mean, it's one of the maps where T side op makes a lot of sense. And, um, in AUG, uh, similarly, in IV, where you can look down from back six on the right side, all the way down IV, I'm lengthening my words to help you see why, like, how far these lines are. They're just straight shots. It's part of what makes this map so hard. Uh, why working up IV takes so many grenades and so much time. Why getting out T-Con is, like, sometimes just a death trap. See, even going into hell and then looking back at Ivy is this long line. It's like it's even scope worthy to be this far away. So you can kill one bullet faster with this AUG than you can with an M4. You have a scope to give you the advantage on the first bullet and all of the bullets afterwards. The spray is incredibly easy and it's just not that much more money. So there's not a lot of reasons to not buy AUGs pretty much all the time as an Ivy player. And I personally think there's room for five AUGs. There's room for five augs, in my opinion, on on the CG side train. Um, it could just be the weapon you, you upgrade to if everyone's like won four rounds in a row and you have lots of money left over. Is completely is just as ver is more versatile than the M4, and it's very friendly to all the different positions on. Honestly, on every map, pretty much like it's it's just a better gun, so. All right, let's see it go to work. No scope there. No scope. Yeah. And the rotation inside. Things have been pretty simple so far. Heroic are, uh, they play weird, huh? They, uh, they, they're just like delaying a lot. Um, and then just popping up, but some rounds are moving a bit quicker. So it's, uh, it seems to be hard to read exactly when they're going to start the round, if that makes sense. So a bit of redundancy here uh, behind three teammates who are kind of holding on to the same thing. Well, four have crossed in front of a screen. That's crazy. There are three more. So he'll just worry about this. I think they're all good outside apart from anybody who may slip into hell, but he's not so concerned about that. And he is the farthest rotate away from the B site, which means he's also going to be the last one to leave, similar to... You know, parallel with, like, the pit position on Inferno. On Train, it's less... It's less... It's not as hard... It's not as hard of a... Or it's not as, like, binary as last one to rotate every single round um, as it is on pit. Uh, because there's certain... Like, if you don't... Like, teams don't always go Ivy, for example, so you might not need your Ivy guy, or you could watch Ivy from back five the middle train which is a very common thing to do now as well so that rotator is more more or less freed up but in general when you think about rotations as a rule of thumb it'd be good to think about them like if you're farther away from the site you shouldn't be the one to just like flee first when you hear a calm or when you hear a noise you should think more about just making sure your team doesn't get faked out or whatever so sometimes it can be good to clear down ivy especially if a team's not going a lot i think you know both situations are great pushing when they're there to get kills early it's a strong push to to make with the ct ct flashes from these uh train tracks down to the right side or down like middle pop flash it very easily because it's so far away and uh someone pushes for information they can get up to the green box they can smoke it aggressively down there and if you if you don't do that then you're actually kind of beholden to this position so I, we haven't seen them take any control down Ivy. I think it would have been a good idea at some point. And now, because they don't do that, um, it's less likely you push late into the round. They just kind of have to sit here and wait and see what happens. And Heroic, I mean, they're they're just kind of waiting as well. But with Purple up in the box halls, as we see on the minimap, he doesn't have to get anybody to rotate in her. They, he's got all the info in the world. So they don't really have another reason to move on the map. 
We just see Heroic just moving out very slowly and getting very slowly mowed down by the John Deere Og of Kirby. Heroic looking not so hot this match. Ooh. Kirby taking that as a interesting oh i guess there was a flash coming up behind him so this was so this is a this is a big thing like that was just a quick decision making by kiri where he was going to get he was going to flash down ivy they were setting up to molly him from doing that but kirby instantly just said i'm in his mind he didn't have to call him this because the guy's calling the flash he just smokes the molly in front of him and then runs through it because he has a flash to work with it it actually works out better that the guy that the guy mollied the bottom of Ivy because he felt incorrectly comfortable that no one was going to push. But the play was already in motion. He was already down there waiting. He just had to make that split-second decision, smoke the molly, and go through Trust the Flash. I was sitting in with a team uh, yesterday and I had a similar situation happen where except the other the other instance happened you know the Molotov came but they didn't they didn't play off the flash instead they played the awkward stand in front of the thing not do it hang back a bit and what I recommended to them was kind of exactly what Kirby just did if your teammate's setting up to throw a flash he doesn't know what the fuck's happening at the bottom of Ivy. He's just going to throw this flash. You figure out the rest. You you throw the smoke down. You run through dry, turned around. You do whatever it takes to just figure it out to work off the flash. Or don't play off it at all and just leave. But don't awkwardly meander around it and uh, expect something to happen. But I like the version where uh, Kirby goes for the push because it was the I, one of the ideas in the in the round for how to start the round out. And like, if Nico's calling and he wants you to push something, then it's important to do it because you get information where Nico's like, I don't want to push, I don't want anyone to push into this round. Can we please get info IV? And if you don't get the info IV, then everyone might be locked into a more passive setup for the rest of the round. Because there are no other plans. So I always kind of lean or err to the side of make it work when possible. Well, the closest they get. There's been a lot of kind of half weird half buys for uh, Heroic. So many pistoling rounds here. Super simple. I mean, Kirby's pushed Ivy once. He's not really doing anything else that's special. At this point, it's really on Heroic to test and push him, but... We haven't seen any grenades come his way. He's just been ch sitting here chilling apart from one or two rounds. And we can really see the confidence now from FaZe. They're just taking over uh, outside and, and taking control of T-Con. And look at, the, look at the options that opens up when you take control of T-Con. You cannot underestimate map control for this reason. Like, for example, because he has T-Con, Kirby can stand up here with his back completely exposed to T-Con, but he's got a teammate in there. So he doesn't have to worry about it. So when you think about map control, you should also think about what angles it opens up for your team. And you, maybe. I think some people have a hard time understanding what the value is of map control. Like, why do we need to say map control? Why can't we just hold our favorite angles? This is one of the reasons. You can make the map brand new. So the smoke goes down on the left. Kirby has this kind of, like, uh, it should be somewhat unexpected angle. The smoke goes up, so he's actually got a... He realizes the pathing might come down this way. They could also run through the smoke through Old Bomb, but either way, he's got info now. No Lurk spotted. We don't know where anybody is. Someone could have gone Old Bomb. We see Purple on the minimap watching it. Wouldn't be surprised if a kill comes his way. It looks like... I don't even know how that guy lurked up. Did he sit in front of the smoke, maybe? He might have sat in front of that back six smoke that Kirby was camping on. And Bomb's not in vision. So this is a fallback spot, very common for the post plant. They don't know Kirby's there. And now he knows heroic guy has to make a play for sure because he spotted Kirby. So 
I bet he's in. Yeah. Pretty much just right there. Okay. Just a good move to make. Thought he was just going to go try to clear a sandwich. It seemed like he kind of did there. And then spot him and went back to look for ladder. Hard to know when you should go to the top trains. That's a good example, but... Uh, top trains is really, it's like super dominant to, to like, say you come out of, uh, T-Con. Once you get someone to the top of train, again, you can just see so many more angles. Yes, you're in danger to all those angles as well, but sometimes your life is worth the information. And sometimes you're not necessarily risking as much as you think, especially if you're coming out on an execute with tons of flashbangs, you know, there's some times where it, it, it does make sense to go, you know, to take a really risky Otherwise risky position like top trains and look for fights and look for information. Should be the warden in the watchtower. So they lurked off this last time, yeah, and they'll, they'll try it again. It seems like it's now like individual places, and I'm pretty sure that that was a right clicked flash. I was talking over it, so. They're trying to do what they can, and they're just getting mowed down. I mean, look how easy it looks with the AUG. And honestly, I think even if you do it too, it's going to be that easy. The AUG spray pattern is so simple. Straight down. Now, if you're like Kirby, straight down with a little Parkinson's. All these smoke plays. Is he really there? Oh my god. Everyone just sitting in smokes this game. Heroic. Very strange game by them. Very strange. The last time we, Kirby knew there was one person at the bottom of IV. When they threw a Molotov. And for the most part, he's going to think about that. That I only saw one person there when they did this last time in this type of pattern. And you should always trust that the, you know, you should always trust in your pattern recognition ability because teams are not going to have that much different stuff every time. Um, I think like, like a good team, obviously, like one thing I, when I was setting up, uh, my first season as an IGL, the first thing I did was make a, the best advice I got was to make a fake or to make a strat and then make a fake based on that same strat and then do that for each map, um, and do that for, sorry, each site and then go from there because you have to be able to mask what you're doing, but Tendencies are a thing like once you tune into like what people do or what they're comfortable doing And especially in a game like this where you're just like owning them you can expect them to make some of the same Tendency based mistakes over and over again And I think it's better to trust those reads than it is to assume that they're like extreme geniuses And are gonna change it up like crazy because honestly most of the time I would say they're not going to Especially for some of these um, tactics that look like they're just a part of a default. Like if it's just something that happens in a default and it's passive, then they don't need to do anything too tricky. And the only time Kirby called it out is when he pushed all the way down. So now the, he does his job here taking out one of the most important players to try to stop the B rotations in, which is the only way that T's win rounds in these post plans. And is really, really patient. And you really can take your time um, in situations like these to uh, to to kind of cover the long con to uh, see, to hold down the ramp, let your teammates clear things out while you watch something else. It's not baiting, especially when you're retaking inner B. This plays like that will always happen. So that was Kirby. That was my theory on the the Kirby spray. And it was it's good to see it's good to see phase playing well it's good to see this kirby pick up playing uh going 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 swimmingly as well i'm i'm, I'm a big fan the up to again three series wins in a row and versus all very very competent teams of course a stand in for complexity um and nip i feel like nip i have so much faith in them i think they're going to be a great team but 
Uh, so it's knock is uh, sitting out because of uh, burnout, I believe, right? So um, who is actually playing on the team right now? I totally forgot. Sorry, I don't have my thing leaned. Wait, is knock playing right now? No, right? Oh. Yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. I didn't realize he, he uh they didn't have a replacement. Well, that doesn't really count then. Poor threat is getting thrown to the wolves. What the hell? I didn't know he was playing. Okay, well anyways, that's it for Coach Lau today, Cure B. Tomorrow I'll be back with another one. Questions. Thank you so much for the comments. Thank you for so much for the support. I really love you guys. I mean it. And um, if you have any more stories you want me to tell, any players you want me to look into, young, young and up and coming, uh, old and tenured, uh, historied, overpaid, whatever it is, let me know. You got something cool, hit me up in the comments with it, and we'll investigate. We'll put our monocles on and investigate. See you back here tomorrow for another Coach Lau.